Amen. I greet you all in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. So good to be in church this morning. Amen. So I want to welcome Sister Amen. Kelly and the students here. It's good to have you all here this morning. Can we all rise to our feet? We're going to bow our heads and we're going to open this Sunday school in prayer. It's okay, go ahead. Amen. 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 I'm just going to pull it to open in prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you brought us here together. And Lord, I pray that you would lead us in wisdom and guide us today as we open up this service. We thank you and lift you up. We give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. See all these beautiful flags here this morning? Yes. yes. Amen. While we're yet standing, um, can we open to our Bibles uh, the book of Judges, chapter 4? Welcome, Melvin. Thank you. Judges chapter 4, reading 22 and 24. And behold, as Barak pursued Caesarea, Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Caesarea lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you for your words this morning. Lord. I want to pray that you bless it to God, bless it to our minds, O oh God, that it will open our minds this morning, Jesus, to who you are, Father. You are a victorious God, O oh God. Thank you this day in Jesus' precious and holy name. I said, Amen. 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 You can be seated this morning. Usually most of our lessons have an icebreaker. So this morning, mine goes like this. Who was the most heroic woman you have ever known? Anybody? Growing up, you know, the superwoman and this, this woman. My mother. Oh, your mother. Amen. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amen. Good answer. Anybody else? Your granny. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I like the story of um, Naomi and Esther. I'm sorry, Na Ruth and Naomi. And I remember the time when Ruth said, you know, when she had lost her husband and everything, she said, Naomi, I will follow you. Mm -hmm. He said, where you go, I will go. And it always, you know, touches me a little bit to say she saw something in Naomi and she, she looked at Naomi and said, this is my role model. I think that was hell hero. Amen? Our lesson today is about God brings victory. No matter what circumstance and situation is, yes. God brings victory. Amen. And He uses different situations and different plans, but He brings victory. When He promises something, He never goes back on His word. Amen? That's right. The story goes in the early 1990s, the leaders of the newborn aviation were uh, Wilbur, Orville, and the Wright brothers. They had invented the aviation and flight. But through that day, there was a young woman. Um, she was a nurse, and she worked in, uh, in the hospitals at that time, and in, and in Canada during the time of the war. And she'd watched um, these flights fly by, and something birthed in the love for aviation. So after the war, she, she went back to, to America and uh, she started to study medicine. But while she was doing that, she took a, 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 another job, um, just you know, doing some clinical work, and she kind of saved her money up. And uh, she saved her money up and she wanted to use this to go uh, for lessons. So she started to go for lessons and uh, she met a lady by the name of uh, Nita Snu, who helped her uh, teach her. While saving her money, she bought her first small airplane, small, maybe a one engine one. And she nicknamed, nicknamed it the Canary. Okay. Yeah. Her name was Eckhart. She continued and she passed an aviation license. And she set so many records for a woman. It was a dominant uh, men's uh, 
uh, men's career that you know mm -hmm. flying was and women were never heard of flying she set so many records she flew from one part of america to the other and she was the first woman to do it solely there was another man who did that so the government at that time uh, uh, bestowed upon her the highest award for military uh, and, 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 and for, for flying over there uh, from one end of America to the other. But then she had opened the door for other women to start flying. And they named this uh, association that they formed, 99s, an international organization for the achievement of female pilots. And sometimes today, you know, uh, in a men dominated world, we look at women and say they, you know, they, they cannot do much. But we look at her and she really opened the door for women. Amen. Our story will come to that this morning, just now. God called a man by the name of Barak. God's calling is individualized. Some have heard God speak in dreams, while others have heard him in visions. Sometimes, you know, uh, we, we sit in church and we want God to speak to us in a, in a very miraculous way. Somebody needs to prophesy to us, you know, come and say, you know what, God has laid this thought on my heart and you know, God's going to bless you. But sometimes it doesn't happen like that. Then. A judge and a prophetess in Israel by the name of Deborah, she sent Barak a direct message as a commandment from God. God used this judge. She was the only female judge at that time. God drew, God drew her towards Mount Tabor and take what she, God said to, uh, spoke to Deborah and said to her to tell Barak to go and go into this battle. And she said to him, draw unto thee unto the river Kishon near Syria, the captain of Jabob's army and his chariots and his multitudes, and I will deliver him into the land. This army was, was powerful. And, 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 and there was a commander, Caesarea. He was a, a very stern, cruel leader. He uh, entreated the Jewish nation. He put them down, he, he depressed them, he, he did whatever he could. And, and they could not they could not touch the army. The army was so powerful. They, they, they were very strong. Mm -hmm. But God had a plan. Amen. God used unusual situations to bring glory. Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. Israel feared oppression at the hands of the Canaanites. In the tumultuous times of the judges, Israel repeatedly failed to follow the Lord's led to oppression by our neighbors. Every time God blessed them and touched the Jewish nation, they went back to the former things. They went yeah. back to sin, immorality, and everything. And then God blessed them and took them out. And they continued doing that. God allowed their adversaries to bring judgment that they may, that they might correct the sinful behaviors. God used leaders called judges to lead Israel to victory back into relationship with Him. Throughout the book of Judges, the repetitious cycle of rebellion, repression, repentance, and restoration continued each time. The tribes of Israel sunk lower into immorality and became more depraved in their conduct like the pagan people living around them. God desires to be in covenant relationship with his people and was not realized how for God revealed his prevailing mercy through his continual love for his people and that love removed that love moved him to respond to the repentance and bring deliverance from the oppression. I remember the time, in the, just before 1948, Israel fought a war, and they fought this war with five Arab countries, and there's no way that they could destroy these countries. Only the hand of God was on them, and they prevailed that battle. Time after time, when Israel went back in, uh, into sin, God, God took them out of this judgment and predict, predicament. And we look at what's happening in Israel at the moment. They, they have gone far, far away from the Lord Jesus Christ at, the, at this time we're living in. Among the northern tribes, King Jabin served as God's judgment when Deborah became, became a judge in Ephraim. The commander of Jabin's army, Caesarea, had been Jabin's strong arm for two decades. He was a strong dictator. He was his right-hand man. For two decades, for 20 years, he, 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 he tormented the, the Jewish nation. Deborah prophesied of Barak's victory. Amen. When Deborah spoke, spoke, spoke the prophet word of God's calling to Barak, she also prophesied the victory would result from the battle. 
I will deliver him into thine hand. When God declares victory, there's no need for doubt or despair. Right. The conclusion has been determined. Right. Sometimes we have our doubts and uh, we, we don't, we say, no, no, God can do it. But we still have our doubts in the back of my, our mind that, 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 that mm. God cannot do it. But he can do the impossible. Amen. Amen. Yes, things, that are, things that are possible, God seem impossible with us. Amen. Yes, Amen. God knows every detail of our situation, yeah. our calling. He knows everything. He knows the beginning from the he knows what's, what, where our story is going to end. He knows where our life is. Amen? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we say, Lord, have you forgotten us in our despair? Where, where is your hand? But God knows best. He knows why he put us in the situations when we are struggling. And the ultimate outcome beforehand, the, cons the consistent one does not speak prematurely. He already sees the outcome mm -hmm. and has anticipate, anticipated every roadblock and every turn of every event mm -hmm. along the way. He right. knows the parts we will take yes. and the pitfalls and the struggles we will encounter mm -hmm. in our journey. Yes. Barak refused to fight without Deborah. Mm -hmm. Amen? He saw something in Deborah because God had used Deborah so much at that time. And he didn't want to go into this battle. He says, he, he says, he says to Deborah, I will not go into this battle until you come with me. Amen? It's just like that there, you know, uh, God as... as, as um, has, uh, has blessed our pastor and put her in this area. We need to stand with her. God has prophesied over her. God has used her. She has a desire for the city. And we can stand be, stand with her, knowing that we can conquer this city in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. God called Barak to lead the military effort against Jabin's army and gave Barak the strategy for the battle that would guarantee victory. Amen. There's no ifs and buts, but the he would guarantee a victory. Right. Despite this assurance of success, Barak resisted God's call and, sh and shared his protest with Deborah. Barak was reluctant to accept the leadership role to which he had been called. He even refused to go to battle unless Deborah agreed to go with him. Amen. Because he had seen Deb he had, I'm sure he had watched the way God had used Deborah. And he says, without Deborah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in this battle, I'm, it's, it's going to be I'm going to lose. Some skeptics have accused Barak of being coward or for being dependent on Deborah to accompany him. But however, Barak was clearly a competent leader. He was able to rally 10,000 men at one time. He just tribes from Nettel and Zebulun to prepare for his war. He was, he, he was a man for people to listen to and when he spoke. Amen. His reluctances may have been out of admiration for Deborah, spiritual leadership, and a desire to have God's presence. Amen. He saw something, and as I said, Deborah agreed to accompany Barak, but she wanted that the honor for the victory would be given to a woman. Mm -hmm. Amen. It was typical to see men in military and leader, military leadership positions. There were no women at that time. But it's noteworthy to see. Deborah as a judge and prophetess in Israel. She emerged as a heroine who brought an end to the cruel oppression of King Jabin's army, army commander. We must heed to God's calling. When God gives us his word and confirms his calling, our response should be faith and courage rather than doubt and timidity. And in humility, we must agree to do what God asks us to do. Amen? We may feel ill-equipped, un unqualified for the responsibilities we have been given. Sometimes when the pastor or, or the leader comes up to you and says, you know what, I see something in you. And you say, you know, pastor, I'm ill-equipped, I'm not qualified. But God is looking for people like that, that are not qualified, because right. he will qualify you. That's he's right. looking for people that are empty, where we'll, we will fill you. Amen? Right. Amen? God is not looking for somebody that's full of knowledge and knows mm -hmm. everything. He can't use them, but right. he can use people. That are, that are not qualified and he can qualify them, amen? amen? With the power of God in them. We may feel ill-equipped and unqualified for the responsibility we have given by God. However, God qualifies the call. He will never task us with impossible calling. Amen. Right. When a leadership comes up to you and say, you, you know, I see something, I need you to go this direction. And I know God's going to use you. Sometimes we, 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 we feel in our, in our minds and our bodies, we're not equipped but let God do the work. 
you know, the calling is there. Let God do the work in you. He will never task us with impossible calling, but He will enable us to achieve the goals He gives us and accomplish us to do. Paul wrote, for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Mm -hmm. God doesn't, when God calls you, He never takes the, that away from you. Mm -hmm. God does not make a mistake. Amen. Right. He never ever makes a mistake. That's right. He knows who He chooses and why they are in those positions. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. We look at powerful men of God. When God called them, they failed God. They made mistakes. But God saw something beyond their imagination. Mm -hmm. Peter, when God, God called Peter, right. Peter was irresponsible. Peter made mistakes. Peter denied the Lord. Yeah. But Jesus knew what he, what he saw in Peter. Mm -hmm. And we know that how God blessed Peter mm -hmm. on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. God does not make mistakes. He has never called someone and, and changed his mind. Yeah. Never. Because the person, the person may lack ability. The psalmist says, the, the psalmist David wrote, As a father pitied his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. Mm -hmm. For you know our fame, he, he remembered that we are dust. God knows our weaknesses and limitations. That's so true. Mm -hmm. As our creator, he knows our ability and inability. And he's with us as our qualifier and an enabler. So God wouldn't call us if he... If he He's not going to use us. And he knows that he can give us, gives us the strength that we can do it. Amen? Amen. God, pro God provided victory through jail. God is never nervous about the outcome or worried about surprise obstacles. Mm -hmm. He sees the end before the beginning. Right. And he knows every difficulty and every problem we will encounter along the way. Hallelujah. He's a great God. Amen. I remember the time... Um, when, when I first came to, to Edinburgh and I met Pastor Beek and I said to him I just don't want to do anything you know I just just want to come and sit at church and <laughs> enjoy worshipping and praising and listening to the word but but God has other plans amen I, I, I never see myself standing in the front here I was uh, I mean I know most of you know me I'm a very outspoken person but uh, I, 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 can, I can be very quiet as well and I can you know I, I would never stand behind this pulpit and a whole lot of people but God knows best amen amen and, and I remember the time Pastor Big says, no, I'm, I'm not going to force you, but I, I know what, God got, what God's got for you. Mm -hmm. And I know I can see it in you. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for that there, amen, for strong leaders mm -hmm. who see something in us right. and who pursue that there. Amen. And it's, it's God speaks to them and, 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 and He tells them, you know. Mm -hmm. God knows every detail of our situation, our calling, our responsibility, and the ultimate outcome before Him. Amen. We must heed to God's call. When God gives us His word and confirms His calling, our response should be faith and courage all the time. Amen. God is never nervous, nervous about the outcome or worried about our surprise obstacles. He sees the end from the beginning and He knows every difficulty and problem we will encounter along the way. He already has the situation in control. Our God will not give us more than we can take. We can draw courage from the promises of his word. Yes. He said in his word that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us until the end. Mm -hmm. I am with you always mm -hmm. until the end. Amen. He which has begun a good work in you will perform it till the end. Yes. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, That's Second right. Peter. Sometimes God chooses the most unlikely participants to work out his plan mm -hmm. and the most creative solutions to bring about the victory. God had a surprise ending for the commander of Jabin's army. He never suspected that his death had been premeditated before the end of the battle. As the moth is drawn to a flame, Jabin's commander was drawn to this conflict out of arrogance that his forces and chariots would conquer the, the Jewish nation and Barak's army. The word of God goes on to say that Deborah and Barak utterly destroyed the men and the men of this uh, of the Canaanites, and each one of them, not one man, was standing, and they all were all perished at the hands of of Barak and his and his men. Syria, he fled and was stubborn. He didn't want to be caught by Barak's men. 
So he, he ended off in, a, in, in another town. And there he, there he met a woman by the name of Jael. And he asked her to take, uh, he wanted her uh, to allow him to stay in the tent nearby. But God had other plans. The story goes on to say that uh, while she watched uh, uh, Syria, he said that he was very thirsty and, and she did provide something to drink. She, she offered him some more. And while he was asleep, the word of God says that she had taken a peg from one of the tents and she drew it into his temple and nailed it onto the ground. Mm -hmm. And Barak and, and, and Deborah destroyed the, the armies of, of, of Canaan. And they went, Barak went looking for uh, Caesarea. And there he found Jael and she said, come, I will show you a man that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And that was sweet victory for the Jewish nation. And mm -hmm. God used uh, this young woman, amen. And God can use us in, in, in different circumstances and different situations, mm -hmm. whether it be at our workplaces, mm -hmm. you know, we may, we may look strange, we may dress up strange, we may speak strange, but God can use us, amen? amen. He can use us. I will experience victory when I accept and follow God's calling right. and God's command. While our battles are often more mental and emotional or spiritual, we can have the same confidence in God's ability to bring us through yes. the victorious deliverance that God wants us to have. Amen. Jesus Christ fights our battles and pushes back against every effort that the enemy pushes against us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Our faith is in God. No power can resist God. I always say to my, my daughter, I said, you know, baby, you know, God is more powerful than the thousand sons. Imagine how powerful God mm -hmm. is. You compare all the nuclear weapons of this world, it's nothing compared to the might and the power of our Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Amen. He is all powerful. Okay. Yeah. Answering the call of God becomes a natural response. And all things become possible through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's a little story that goes on to say, I'm just going to paraphrase. Sometimes, you know, uh, a mom goes on to say that a little child runs through the, runs through the house and uh, she, she slams the door and she breaks everything in a glassware in, uh, that's lying next to the door. And the mom shouts at her, but that's a daughter. She, the little child, little child says, Mom, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it again. And the mom says, okay, you know, I, I will forgive you for this. So the little child forgets about what she did. A few months later on, she does the same thing. She runs through the house and she slams the door and she breaks a whole lot of things. And the mom forgives her again. And she says, Mom, I'm sorry. Just like that for the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how many pitfalls we, no matter how much we sin, when we go back to him with repentance, God is ever willing to forgive us and give us another opportunity. Because we will never be immune to sin. Only when mortal puts on immortality on that great day, there shall be no sin. But today we are faced with sin everywhere we go. But we have a Savior and a Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. Amen. Daily we need to repent when we go on our knees and yes. say, Lord, I've, I've sinned, I've forgiven you. Every night we need to do that, no matter what the situation. Say, Lord, I failed you and please forgive me. God can use each one of us in situations that we may not think that is possible. Mm -hmm. Everything is possible with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We, we look at situations and say, Lord, it's impossible my neighbor is going to listen to me. You know, I, I, I am not, I'm not as smart as him. I cannot uh, speak like him or say anything. I remember somebody was speaking here lately and I said, uh, if, if, you know, if, you have, if you're a new neighbor and, uh, and you don't know how to get to go to your neighbor and talk to them, Maybe just bake a cake and go up to them and just say that this is for you, you know. And that, you, 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 you can converse with them, you can talk to them. And God opens doors. Amen. God can use us. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, we may seem inadequate. We, we cannot speak well. Moses, Moses said, Lord, I, I stutter. I, I, I can't speak. Right. You are sending me to take the children of Israel out of Egypt, uh -huh. a mighty nation uh, like, like Egypt. Lord, I, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. But God used Moses. Right. Amen. God used, look, look, look at how God used most to bring the children of Israel out. And, right. he, and he brought victory to them. God can use us in the city that we're living in. Yes, Edinburgh can. seems Amen. to be a, a city that, you know, people think, you know, uh, there's, there's, it's a city different from all the other cities, you know. Uh, people are so different from Glasgow, from, from Dundee. But, but God has put us in a strategic position. Each one of us mm -hmm. are from different countries here. Um, other than Rachel, uh, who's, who's from Scotland, but... I see each one of us here this morning, all of us, 
We have different countries, mm -hmm. South Africa, Canada, China, uh, the Philippines, Ghana, uh, Nigeria, uh, Zimbabwe, amen. So God has brought us in this place and he's put us in strategic positions to use us, amen. Sometimes we ask, we think, Lord, why have I come here? You know, you brought me to this place. What's my purpose? Just let God open your mind and show you what his purpose yeah. is. So as I said, God can use any one of us mm -hmm. to, as long as we got him in us, we, 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 we have victory. Amen? Amen. Ah, God bless you this morning. I'm just going to have the service here. Okay. We're going to take up uh, a Sunday school offering this morning. Let us stand. We're going to sing a chorus this morning. Amen. And ask, uh, I'm going to ask Marshall to play the keyboard for me, please. I know it's International Sunday, but we have come this morning to worship and praise the one true God, the King of Kings, the Almighty God, and His name is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just praise the Lord this morning. Let's give Him some glory this morning. Let's tell Him He is worthy to be praised. He's the great I am, hallelujah, Jesus. All power is given to him in heaven and in earth. The King of Kings. We have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him. There's one reason how you just worship him. We have come to this house and we gather in his name to us. Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful presence of the Lord.
It's His blood that cleanses us this morning.